What is happening, everybody? This is Cody, aka DFS Prodigy, coming to you live with the fire picks from the prodigal son. So, my name is Cody. Basically, for the new people that are hopping in, I break down daily fantasy sports, basically any sport that there is. My favorites are NBA and UFC. So, this is obviously NBA DFS for April 3rd. Um, it is Saturday for the day before Easter. So, I work tomorrow and Sunday, unfortunately, but I'll be here around 3 p.m. tomorrow and 7 p.m. on Sunday. So, but like usual, we still have NBA. I'm still going to do breakdown videos. Y'all know how it goes. I'm excited to do WWE videos now, so definitely check that out. So, but like usual, before we begin, before we begin, before we begin, always, always, always hit that like button for me. Subscribe to my channel. That's been a ton, as y'all know. And let's dig in to this NBA DFS 8 gamer. So let's dig in. So Dallas and Washington. Big news, of course, is what's going to happen on the Washington side. So let's dig in on them first. Bradley Beal. What in the world are we going to do with Bradley Beal? So Westy, if there's no Beal, I'm loading up what um, Russell Westbrook once again. You just can't get away from it. Rui Hachimura is playing big minutes. I like that. Jerome Robinson, 3-6. As long as he starts, he's a good value. So... Just basically just watch and see what happens with Beal. Because if Beal is in, that takes away from this whole entire team and I only want Rui pretty much. On the Dallas side, give me two players and two players only. Porzingis and Luca. I can't get to anybody else on this team. Those are the only guys I want. Let's move on to a better game. New York and Detroit. So on the New York side, Julius Randle, obviously a good match. If you can certainly get to him. RJ Barrett. The minutes are kind of scattered for me. That's what worries me if he's seeing... 31, 41, 32, 38. As long as it gets over 30 minutes, he can get you there. But look at the stats. It's just, it's not great. I can't do it. Alec Burks, kind of similar story. Uh, it's hard to get to him, basically, in my opinion. The rest of the guys are too many guards for this team. I just want Julius Randle. On the Detroit side of the ball, though, Jeremiah Grant. God. Um, 22, 47, 17, 17, 31. That should tell you how I feel. If I just had a button where it said, don't do it, that would be the button I wouldn't want to play on them. Is I want to play Jeremiah Grant so bad, but don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So Mason Plumley, I can't do it either. Sneak Bane, no, thank you, Diallo. I like him at his price tag if he gets, if he does play the minutes. So you can look at him. Going on to Cleveland and Miami. I hate playing this Cleveland and Miami team. So let's just look at the Cleveland side, though. So Jared Allen, obviously out, and so is Larry Nash Jr. Give me some Colin Sexton at 7-2. I like that. Darius Garland, 6-2. I don't mind that either. Kevin Love is the guy at 5-3. 20 minutes, 22 points. He can get you there. We know Kevin Love has upside. We know he does. 4-3 for Hardstein. Gosh, I want to play him again so bad, but the foul trouble is there. The minutes are just meh. But he's a point-per-minute monster. So, Hartstein, if you want to get to him, you can get to him. Miami side. So, wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. Oladipo, 7-3 for Victor Oladipo. And he only got you 19 points in 23 minutes. Interesting. Very interesting. But anyways, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Victor Oladipo. I'm not playing any of these guys. I just want to see how they work out before I jump into them. Minnesota and Philly. Brotherly love. So on the Minnesota side, Carl Anthony Towns, 10,000. I'm not playing it. Anthony Edwards, 7-3. He's shooting the ball a ton. We know how it goes. If you want to get to him, you can get to him. Malik Beasley at 5-9. He's a good value that definitely has upside. But Daniels is in play, in my opinion. Um, as scary as that sounds, he can get you there with the minutes he's playing, but I want him to have more minutes. Noel, I think, is in play with no Rubio. Uh, I don't mind that if he gets some minutes over 20. So he's a value. Jordan McLaughlin, though, I'd much rather play him at 3-5. I feel like he's a safer option. On the Philly side, so Joel Embiid is questionable. We need to wait and see what happens with Joel Embiid. Because if that's the case for him, if he's playing, what does that mean for this team? That's the biggest thing. That takes away from literally everybody on this team. So it takes away from Ben Simmons. It takes away from Tobias Harris with the price tags. No Dwight Howard for me then. We just need to wait and see what happens with Joel Embiid. And it's the biggest news so far on the slate. 
Indiana and the Spurs. So Sabonis, he's on track to play. So you know what that means, though. He's on track, but it, we could be different with him. So just kind of wait and see what happens with him. Brogdon, so he was scratched from today's game. So basically, just wait and see what happens with him. If there's no Malcolm Brogdon, we could definitely see some Karis LeVert, some more TJ McConnell, no Jeremy Lamps, that boost up Doug, Dougie B. So I don't mind getting to some of them on the Spurs. Not much really for this team to talk about. DeRozan, Murray, same old place. I'd rather get to Murray, though, based on the upside. Derek White has upside at 6,000. Just a meh team. Orlando and Utah, gosh, I hate this Orlando team. Do we even need to go over this team? Like, honestly, do we need to go over this team? Because I hate doing it. I absolutely hate going over this team. It makes my blood just boil. Like, I hate this team. So, Okiki, I mean, I guess at 5'8", MCW, who even knows what's going to happen with MCW when he can literally be scratched and play the next game and somehow be healthy. I don't even know. Dwayne Bacon, the Bacon Master, I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I just don't even want to go over this team. Donovan Mitchell, though. Eight eight in this matchup alone. I think he can get you there. Rudy Gobert, he should be able to smash and do his thing. Mike Conley, I like his price tag. Joel Clarkson, Jordan Clarkson, Joe Ingles are no goes now with Mitchell healthy. Just a meh. Not not much, really. They should be able to smash though. Two games ago. OKC in Portland on the OKC side. No Horford, no Basley, no SGA. So give me the huge and Moses Brown. Whoever thought, by the way, quick snippet. Whoever thought. And Moses Brown would be 7-3 on a drafting slate in the NBA for the season. Who thought of that? Who thought literally on this Thunder team that this would be like this with Roby at 6-2 with Theo Mouth and all of a sudden at 6,000? Who would have thought? Definitely not me, but it is what it is. So, like I said, Moses Brown I like that at 7-3. I like Theo Mellon at 6,000. I could definitely get you there. Just watch out for this matchup. So, Portland Nation smash. Give me some pal at 6-2. Nurk, we need to see the minutes. If he's off the minutes limit, I like him at 5'5". Five, five. Roku, shooting the ball extremely well. I like that at 6'5". A little bit is kind of overpriced, in my opinion. And I like me some CJ McCollum. So, Milwaukee, oops. Oh, man. What am I doing? X is off. So, Milwaukee and the Kings. So, on the Milwaukee side, obviously, obviously, obviously. Giannis, obviously playing. I like her. I like Giannis. Chris Middleton or Drew Holiday. I like Drew Holiday more. Steven Chenzo, no thank you. No thank you to Brooke Lopez. No thank you to Bobby Portis. I, I'm not getting any of those guys. That's no thank yous. On the Kings, though, uh, the matchup alone is kind of scary to me. De'Aaron Fox, I ain't not. I'm not really getting to him. I'm actually going to get to Rashawn Holmes, who's in a good matchup alone. I like Halliburton with the minutes he's playing. But he healed 5-8. It's a great price tag, in my opinion. So, Thank you all for tuning in to this NBA DFS breakdown. Hope everybody has a good and safe rest of their night. Have a good one, everybody.